Good morning and welcome to the program Perspectives. This morning on the program Perspectives, attention would be on Kaduna State. Now, what we want to do with uh, the topic Kaduna State is to find out the state of Kaduna State. And talking about the state of Kaduna State, we'll also be looking at um, 2023 as we get ready for that year. And of course, uh, looking at um, those that have shown interest in taking over the mantle of leadership in the state prospects of these candidates and what they want to bring in we'll be looking at that on the program perspectives this morning and sharing thoughts with me and talking about it the state of Cardinal state and um, issues coming out of the state and of course um, the candidates that have shown interest to take up the mantle of leadership in the state i have with me a former colleague of mine still <laughs> and uh would uh, anytime still be a colleague uh, and in the person of um, Edward John Outer. Edward John Outer, we all know, we you know, said a big congratulations to him, not only to his person, but also to Invicta Radio, uh, because he's, he's one of us that has moved on. And um, wherever, you know, whatever is into now, we're all wishing him the best, you know, to come out. Edward Outer, as we all know today, is the Director of Media Relations of um, Honorable Isa Mohamed Ashiru and um, the campaign uh, consultative uh, working committee of that organization. That's you know the position that Edward John Outer is into today. And so he'll be talking about his candidate, uh, who we also know is in the race, what he has to bring in, what he wants to bring in. And uh, all of that, we'll look at that this morning on the program, Perspectives. Edward John Outer, good morning. Glad to have you here with us. Thank you for having me, Olo. Mm. <laughs> Quite some time now, but again, uh, we, we would always want to you know share thoughts with you on matters affecting the state. So we're talking about Kaduna State, and uh, we're also looking at uh, the state of Kaduna State. Uh, we're talking about what Kaduna State is experiencing, you know, what is showing up, and of course, you know, what can be said of Kaduna State of today, and then make comparisons of Kaduna State of old. So y y your thoughts here. Yeah, good morning, listeners, and uh, happy Good Friday to the people of Kaduna State and everyone within Kaduna Town. Uh, talking about the state of Kaduna State today, uh, I would say, I would just summarize it to mm. say that uh, Kaduna State is in a state of despair. Hopelessness has taken over almost every facet of the state's life and the life of its people. The indices are there, I can tell you, by rankings, by ratings of several reputable institutions. Kaduna State is in a state of hopelessness. Today, Kaduna is the headquarters of insecurity in this country. Kaduna State has been ranked one of the worst state in terms of the index for ease of doing business in this country by a body that is headed by the vice president of this country who belong to the same political party uh, with the ruling government in Kaduna State. I mean, permit me to quickly add, uh, Edward Outer, because I, I didn't, you know, include that when I was giving out, giving your profile, you know, a bit of you, that uh, you are of the PDP. Yes, um, I mean, that's uh, what, you know, Edward is in the PDP party. Eh? And so uh, what we're getting to would be from someone from taking it from the perspectives of your party and, of course, what you also may be looking at. Yes, rather, I would prefer that you say that um, I'm taking it from the perspective of the majority of the people of Kaduna State. Because if you live on the streets and you live with the people on the street, in the rural communities, in the villages, you realize that they share exactly the same sentiment. Could we just also that I share? look at it as your opinion here yeah, about what you're saying? Because uh, we've because had others that have come on this program to, you know, to give a pass mark to what government and the, 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 the ruling party is doing for the state. So let's take it from that angle of your own perspectives into this matter. Well, you may wish to call it my own perspective, but like I said, we live with the people, we interact with the people across rural communities, 
across suburbs in Kaduna State and even in Kaduna Town. If you live with the people, among the people, if we live in Kaduna State, even if you don't live in those areas, probably you live in a more safer uh, environment within Kaduna. But of course, we hear the reports. The state government even has reduced itself into an update giver about activities of bandits, activities of kidnappers, activities of terrorists. Every day an attack happens, somebody from government quarters will just update us of the number of people killed or taken away, number of houses destroyed or burned, without any clear plan, without giving the people any assurances, any hope that uh, these uh, uh, attacks are going to be ending anytime soon. So this is how bad we have gone. This is the state of Kaduna State at the moment. This is a state where poverty uh, and unemployment are on a record high. People have lost their means of livelihood. Businesses have been destroyed and demolished without providing alternatives. People have been sacked from their jobs without payment of entitlements. You know, name them. And these things, you can explain clearly why Kaduna State is the worst in terms of insecurity because of the poor policies of government, of government in the last six years. These policies have somehow contributed immensely to raising the number of hopeless, of the jobless, and of the criminals among us. This is the state of Kaduna State as it were today. And if you are to compare it with where we are coming from, I'm sure you have heard, you have come across people who are saying, look, take us back to where you collected the mantle of leadership. Well, that, 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 that could yes. just be as subjective as, as, as people as, are saying it everywhere. But again, I am still, you know, putting across that um, we, what we get from you, what we hear from you, will come from the perspectives of you, your party and uh, what you are saying about the issues or the risks. Yeah, because again, while making statements like that, sweeping statements for that matter, like that, we also have people who have come to give pass mark. To Ole, what Ole, yes, Ole, 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 look, look, look. The, the Le, last mark I'm Le, saying is that for people who are no bias into you know uh, political parties or political leanings, okay, who have come to say that uh, this is what we where we found Kaduna State. Le, let me ask you a simple question. And sir. what we yes, I asked the question. It, it's not, it, yeah, it's not about bias. Mm. I'm sure you go to the market, you buy food items for yourself and members of your family. It's not about party. So is it about Kaduna State? Is it, you know, if you want to take it from the horizon of what is happening in the country, would you just limit yourself or would, should we limit ourselves to just Kaduna State? In well, terms of uh, the indices that you're looking across. Unfortunately, unfortunately for us today, the topic under review is Kaduna State. We are looking at the state of Kaduna State today. And so, and they will take it away from the nation, you know. I mean, it's just a part. Well, even you know, if if you listen to my opening remarks, some of these things, Kaduna State is having it worse than what is happening in other parts of the country, because in other parts of the country, there is a more responsible, a more responsive government. So what could be the reason? reason? Level. So what could be the reason for you know what you? putting out or putting across now where do we find the fault lines the leadership at the state the leadership at the state and that is what i'm trying to tell you today in kaduna state the level of insecurity is so high is so bad that people can hardly go to farms to farm even for subsistence you know the pattern of the attacks in kaduna state these attackers do not only kill people, they do not only destroy property, but in the rainy seasons, they go as low, as wicked, as destroying farmlands and farm produce. If you have stores, they set them on fire. So the whole thing is breaking this state down economically. You can explain why food prices have skyrocketed. Kaduna State is one of the uh, agricultural based 
or agrarian based societies and the level of insecurity is so high so even to produce for subsistence is a problem so you can explain why people are suffering you can explain why people are poor you can explain why people are hungry cattle rustling is another issue that has assumed a monumental proportion in the last seven six seven years if you listen to the testimonies of some of the kidnapped and released people they will tell you some of these bandits will tell you that they were herders before whose cattle whose inheritance have been taken away and because they have no other means of survival they had to join the business what is responsible for all this failure of, of governance bad leadership today, today even in 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 the face of glaring challenges daunting challenges facing the state sometime last year education that is supposed to provide hope for the younger generation was and that is supposed to be compulsory that is supposed to have unlimited access was limited over 200 300 percent increase in tuition fees no no again, people again, cannot go to school or some people drop out of school what do you think they will become again, again how will they affect how, how, the security how, situation in the how, state we're talking about realities of time you yes. know and the reality that we're in and, and then when you look at make comparisons to what happens in other states to what is happening in the state that there's a there's an increment in you know um education or getting you know it across you know to all the um, citizens of the country i'm talking about the youths of the country mm. would that be enough reason to say that because there have been an increment so it's not working or education is not working in the state and but again we call that uh, this administration fair to it that it has given from primary to secondary school free education we we, we have that it's on record and so, and so this, i still insist that um you know that we look at these you know um the void the void of uh party affiliations all of that just present the situation as it is yeah when you have free education at the primary and secondary level and you cannot further you can go to the tertiary institution because that is where the increment actually took place you go there when you are done you are bright you have all the qualifications and you don't have the money to enroll so what do you make of the other st the states that so are not even giving this out you know they're not seeing it as um i, I do not think I do, I do not think that there is any state in northern nigeria where uh primary and secondary education to some extent are not free i do not think there is any state in northern nigeria i stand to be corrected it, it's like that in fact the one in kaduna state came belatedly because I think it was the, uh, it was the advent, ad advent of this administration that is why it, yes. it came belatedly but in most states of northern nigeria that has been the case and what we are talking about is simple when government wants to make policies it has to look at its effect its consequences on the present and its consequences on the future you cannot deny the young the youths of your state access to tertiary education you cannot limit it and then you expect that the future is not going to face even worse security challenges uh, the opening so, of this program uh, edward once again i introduce you as uh, you know the the the, uh, the 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 media relations um officer director so to say of um honorable isa mohammed ashiru's uh, campaign consultative working committee and so speaking on behalf of uh, your principal and uh, is also you know in the race uh, for the, the 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 seat the number one seat in the state and um, looking at this administration this is the second term of this administration mm. second term and so this administration had lasted to this time mm. and uh, your principal had made attempts the first and second time was not um, you know the people don't see him as one they wanted he's also in the race for the third time so what are you what are the things you're seeing that could give him you know the leverage to say that the people of the state or citizens would want him to come on board well at the fear of being immodest uh i don't want to say that my principal actually won the 2019 election uh, because uh, by official results declared by ENEC, it said otherwise but for the people of kaduna state the citizens the electorates and for those who even observe keenly 
the happenings in Kaduna State, we all know what happened in 2019. We know that there is no way the people of Kaduna State, rational people, exposed people, educated people, would reinforce failure in 2019. It was completely impossible. We know the things that happened. In the other election, we won. The real election, we won. Well, that, that's, but, that's the way we're getting. But, um, but, then, but you yes. won, your party won so, so, in your party. Maybe that, that, that could be... No, 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 that's, that's not what I'm saying. Not for the, not we know the state. compromises. We know we have evidences of the compromises, of the manipulations that happened. We went to court. Unfortunately, that matter was not de de determined on the substance of the case. It was determined on technicalities of law. And <laughs> the, 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 of, of course... <laughs> But he was not given. To, uh, he, he, he was not given. Yeah, yeah, of course, he was not given. Mm. But it is also important for the people of Kaduna State to know that most of the issues that were presented, our party requested for vote recount in twelve local governments. It has been done before in several states. In Edo, Adams Oshomole became governor because of vote recount in certain areas where he alleged irregularities. And when the votes were recounted, indeed. It was discovered that the 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 the, 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 the results were manipulated in Kaduna State. We requested for recount in twelve local governments. We have the results of the polling units because the Supreme Court of Nigeria had always said that elections are won and lost at the polling units. The tribunal, in its wisdom, for whatsoever reason, declined that request. So votes were not recounted, and I can tell you. I went to court on each day of the sitting. If you go there, you understand the comedy that happened that time. You know, with all due respect to the judiciary. But I can tell you, in the end, that matter was not determined on the substance of the case based on the issues that were raised. The, but, the, on, the, but on technicality. The essence of it was that it was determined by the judiciary too. So it holds, it stands. As, as, of course, as we're getting it that. stands. But it is important for the people to know So I, I that mean, uh, the mandate was pursued, the mandate that they freely gave to the PDP and to my principal was pursued up to the Supreme Court. But the court chose technicality and so we respect for that substance respect for the, the rule of, of law, we do. For law. Okay. Yes. Uh, again um for this race that we, we've seen candidates who have who have shown intention of uh you know taking over aspiring to the number one position in the state and um the list is um we have them uh sunny cd is there you know um Hunku is there and uh you know we some some people are talking about you know um the previous you know governor that we had in the state and so in all of this with your principal i mean that's you know as a director of his campaign organization the chances that he has because again let's go back to some of the things that were raised about your principal mm. certificate scandal was there that, that that was an issue there too that was, was sort of, then again that your candidate does not have you know the the, the you know the, the the, the compunction, so to say, of uh, being, you know, the, the one that can move the state forward. Because, like it or love it or don't like it, don't love it. One thing stands out for the, you know, the the, the, the number one citizen of the state presently mm. that he, he has the push, he has the presence, he has, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know that yes, you can look up to him as the leader. And so, you know, in making comparisons here with all the other aspirants I have listed, and your, you know, your principal. The chances here i can tell you and you can take it to the bank that the people's man right honorable isa muhammad ashuru will win the pdp primaries he has no contender even as of today if you have been following what is happening within the pdp he is the only candidate that has been working just this week the campaign team was in zaria to inaugurate to commission his campaign office and inaugurate the campaign team in the central and then on wednesday we are in southern kaduna to do that the support have been massive which other candidate has done as half as as what he has been doing since the beginning of this year in respect to 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 the pdp primaries which is happening or coming up in less than in, in less than two months mm. so it is clear god is not a cheat God will always reward those who work hard. And the people of Kaduna State, the people of PDP, know 
this for a fact that Ashiru is the candidate that has been with the party since after the 2019 election. I will tell you, there were some people who lost primaries in the build up to 2019 and they did come to the APC to go and join forces to rig the PDP out in 2019 because they lost the primaries. Today they are back to the party and they said they should be given the driver's seat. Do you think the PDP people are, are, are stupid? They know these people. They know their antecedents. And you know, in politics, antecedents count. There are people who deserted the party. They are in the party. They didn't fund the party. They didn't care whether the party survives another four years or not. Ashuru was there. He is the man who sustained that party till today. So if anybody wants to contest governorship in PDP, it is because there are people who believed in the party and who sustained the party till now. And you think the members of the PDP across the state are not aware of these facts? Number three, there were people who wanted to kill PDP after 2019. The congresses that happened or took place in 2020, after the congresses, they brought all manner of allegations and accusations, petitions, litigations. Some of them collaborated with the enemies of the party and took the party to court a record 21 times some of those cases are still undecided and today they have come back or their surrogates have come to say look give us the driver seat of the party in the 2019 election and you think the same esco that you wanted to deny them the opportunity to be esco to be delegates of the party are fools they remember these things so all these things will count but above all winning elections requires somebody who is on ground somebody who is loved by the people somebody who is known and somebody who knows the state and its people who knows its history among all the aspirants not just in pdp among all the aspirants across all the political parties nobody knows kaduna state like isa Ashur. he has been part of governance since 1999 in this state Nobody knows Kaduna State. Nobody knows the people more than Isa Ashuru. Among all the aspirants that are contesting today, among all the aspirants, nobody has the kind of network and alliances that he has across the 23 local governments of the state, within and outside the PDP. These are some of the reasons why he won in 2019, in, in, in 2018. And let me tell you something that people didn't know. In 2018, he was in APC. It was some PDP leaders from Southern Kaduna that went to Zaria, his zone, met with some PDP politicians from that place and said, look, if we are looking for somebody who can take over the mantle of leadership, who can defeat the APC, we need this man to return home. And they went and begged him to join the PDP. So he came and they stood by their word. They gave him the ticket. And the results, I will say it later, the results of the 2019 election is there for everybody to see. I will give you the figures, zone by zone. Let me quickly again add into it that um, we, within your party, the PDP, has the issue of uh, the old, you know, block, or so to say, mm. and the new one has been settled. Because again, this is an issue. Because with the PDP today, there are factions, there are blocks that we know that have said that... Uh, the old ones still want to maintain and do not want change in the party and that is one of the you know biggest issue of, of your party today there is no there are no blocks in the pdp the pdp is one united indivisible family in Kaduna state but are there people who are disgruntled by certain happenings yes there are even in a family you have people or you have disgruntled elements within it who have issues with certain happenings and all of that or issues with not getting it the way they want but that is not to say the family is divided there is no division in pdp there are no blocks in pdp even the leader of the disgruntled elements in the pdp you know, have, you know have, them. Have left. You know them. he has left the party you know them. The, their leader their you know leader, you know you know them their leader has left the party okay you know them the, the, the perennial political mm. traveler mm. you know he 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 was a disgruntled element in the apc and then uh, Governor Nasri Erufai 
you know, pushed him to the precipice and he had no choice than to leave the party. He came to the PDP and he's talking straight in trade. It's caused confusion, caused division. He came here again. The real people, the owners of PDP and the PDP faithful across, they say, no, we cannot allow you. We know you. We cannot allow you to destroy our party. The environment became very, very inconvenient, very hot for him. Now he has traveled out of the PDP again. And I can tell you, the PDP is enjoying uh, uh, peace, is enjoying serenity, and we are moving as a family. And I can tell you, uh, the primaries will be peaceful, it will be rancor-free, and right on the Issa Muhammad Ashiru will emerge uh, victorious. Then talking about uh, the issue of the issues you raised about my candidate, I can tell you that uh, sometimes when I read comments like that, I just see them as some pieces of comedy. Yes, it is comical. Isa Muhammad Ashuru is a man who is not new in politics. He has contested election in 19, between 1999 and 2011. He has contested elections, general elections, as a member of the House of Assembly, a member of the National Assembly, and won. So, no issue with his credentials. Number two, all of these people that are t talking about his certificate having issues and all of that, which one is easier and which one is more rational to just come to the media and cast as passion on somebody's certificate or qualification or write the bodies that have issued these certificates for people that know him very well. Authentication for people that know him. Look, mm. Ashuru cannot issue himself certificate. If he said that he has written Waiek or Neko and he presented that certificate to INEC, the most rational thing to do is to get a copy of that certificate, write to Waiek and say you are, you are asking Waiek to authenticate this, this certificate, whether it is correct or not, whether it was issued by Waiek or not. None of these people has done that. They chose the easy way. And the easy way is to defame, to assassinate the character of a man that they know is loved by the people and is going to be governor of Kaduna State. So that is one. So please, we call anybody that comes and tell you that Ashiru has certificate issue. Ask him, has he written to Wayek? He went to Kaduna Poli, he went to Katsina Poli. Have you written to those schools? To And those schools have replied you and said those certificates are fake. He went to Bayero University, Kano. Have you written to the university to, to and then you got a feedback that those or that certificate that he's parading from BUK is fake. So there are things that people should not fall cheaply to. People shouldn't be gullible. You must put on your thinking cap when people are telling you certain things. Ashuru has no certificate issue whatsoever. And in any case, by this uh, provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, by the judgments of the Supreme Court, you don't even need a certificate to contest election. All you need is evidence. Because you say evidence that you have attended uh, uh, school up to up to up to secondary school. Evidence. No, matter, testimony, where, no matter where it comes from. Even your testimonial. It, the question did not say where it has evidence. Even a testimonial from a secondary school qualifies you to contest for, 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 for a governorship election or presidential election. Ashuru was a civil servant for over 20 years in the state. By the provisions of the constitution, even his records of service, because the constitution say at least 10 years of service in the civil or public service. Ashuru has all these qualifications, so he doesn't even need any certificate for him to be. Uh, but the truth is, his certificates are authentic, they are genuine, and I can tell you, he is in court. The chief rumor monger, uh, with due respect, Professor Muhammad Sanibello. Who raised that issue in 2019? Ashiro has taken him to court. The matter will be coming up on the 25th of this month. And we invite citizens to come there. Court 13. Court 13 here at the State High Court. Let them come there. Professor Muhammad, uh, Professor Muhammad Sanibolo will be there to defend the allegations that he has raised. Because they are baseless. They are weightless. And they are of no effect. People will come. They are here. We are in court. The program is Perspectives and it's coming to you on Invicta 98.9. And this morning, with, you know, attention is on Kaduna State.
state of Kaduna State as it is, and of course, um, aspirants, you know, those showing interest of uh, coming in to be the number one citizen of the state, of course, the qualifications and uh, what they can offer, all been discussed this morning by none other than um, Edward John Outer, Director of Media Relations to uh, Honorable Isa Mohamed Ashiru's campaign, committee, uh, campaign consultative working um, committee. And so we're getting to hear that. Uh, of course, when we come back from this break, we're going to look at other areas too, where you know we think uh, that the aspirants must you know address. We'll come back after this short break. Uh, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. The morning show that blows your mind. Victor Welcome back. Here's the program perspectives this morning, and um, looking at uh, Kaduna State focus this morning, and uh, looking at the state of Kaduna State. Also looking at uh, the aspirants as they're coming out um, for the number one seat in Kaduna State. What they can offer, and all of that. For us this morning, uh, we're looking at um, the states. Of Kaduna State, and of course, with me in the studios, Director of Media Relations of um, Honorable Isa Mohamed Ashru's Campaign Consultative Working Committee, Edward John Outer, with me in the studios this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Edward, before we went on that break, you, you were talking about um, the case coming up in Kaduna State about the certificate issue that uh, Professor Sani Bello had come up with. Also, in Zaria, in um, Dugarawa. In, in Zaria, mm. another case is coming up about it, it came uh, up yesterday. Yesterday, mm. about you know taking Ash Isa Ashiru to court on mm. his certificate. Mm. So, what are we getting with these two, uh, you know, developments? Okay, le let me let me tell you the difference. The one that is coming up in Kaduna mm. was instituted by Isa Ashiru himself against mm. Professor Muhammad Sanibello. Okay. Uh, whereas the one in Dogarawa yesterday was instituted by a concerned member of the PDP. PDP. Who, you know, relying on Sani Bello's allegation, took Isa Ashiru to court, you know, to say that uh, he does not possess the minimum requirement or he has certificate issues uh, with regard. So he is concerned that if Ashiru should be given the ticket, that uh, even if he wins the election, uh, it can be contested, you know, at the tribunal and the victory taken away. So he has taken Ashiru to court to prove yeah. the authenticity okay. of his certificate. A concerned, a member. concerned, concerned member. member. A right. concerned okay. member of All the right. PDP. So, so we, we're getting that. that that's yes. clear enough. So right. and, uh, uh, for those who were in court yesterday, uh, the proceeding was, was more or less a piece of comedy. You know, in fact, the, the plaintiff uh, showed remorse. You know, he was asked some of the questions that I asked here. Has he ever seen any of the certificates presented by right honorable musa isa muhammad ashuru for election he said no have you ever written to INEC, to wayek and all the relevant bodies that issued those certificates to demand the authenticity of those certificates presented he said no so on what premise Okay, so, we'll so, so he said he said it is, it is he said it is out of concern. It is purely out of concern because he was worried by 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 the baseless allegation, which is of Professor Sanibelu. which is still right, and so the court, courts will prove that. Yes, know, so yes. so 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 the court has fixed, I think, the twenty seventh or so okay. of this month. Okay, you know, to receive final addresses, you know, by parties involved in the case. So so we we'll leave it at that, uh, Edward. Uh, now we've we'll, we'll talked about. Uh, your principal and what he can come with or what he has in stock for the citizens of Kaduna State. Why he, you know, he thinks that um, he, you know, he should be the one co to consider. Have you also, because this is what I want to bring in, we we've talked about other candidates. I, I mentioned names of mm. some candidates, but again, let's look at the present, you know, the government of the day. Mm. Have you, have you, or, you know, taking consideration of um, uh, who the ticket may go to in Kaduna State from the APC, Mm. And why you think um, the you know you, you uh, your party could be your candidate or your principal can be a threat to you know whatever candidate of government is coming up from the APC? 
yes we have but the question is what would that candidate of the apc be telling the people of kaduna state what i, I i'm just imagining what would the person be be telling us as we, if nothing had happened in kaduna state of course by the okay, government from, or a, from a PDP that. perspective it's, too. It's, it's, I mean that has that. to be we, from, we have to understand from that the mm -hmm. from the governor's own admission after the uh, Kaduna uh, to, uh, to Abuja train attack, he came out to vent his frustration. He came out to confess that the APC government at the state and national level have failed by his own verbatim, verbatim by his own admission, and he said he was even worried by what they would be telling God on judgment day it's there it was broadcast by by bbc house and, and, and so that uh, so, so by, uh, by his own admission mm. he said the apc government at state and uh, have failed and he also vented out his frustration at the failure of his godfather or self-acclaimed godfather president muhammad Bahari, to go and bomb these bandits because they know where they are for the first time, Governor Nasir El Rufai shares the sentiment of the majority of the people of Kaduna State that Kaduna State today is worse than Afghanistan and its bordering regions of Pakistan. It's worse than Afghanistan in terms of terrorism. That has been the view of the majority of the people of this state. You know, so he has come out to say or to confirm the allegations that government have not been protecting lives. And that life under this regime has become brutish, like we are in the Hobbesian uh, state of nature, you know, so to say. So, for anybody to think that any candidate of the APC has a chance, when the same APC-led government has come out to tell the people... Now, are we not saying two different things so, here? So, because so, 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 again, so, what I'm... So, what, so, what, and what, then secondly, what, secondly, mm, secondly mm. I said something earlier. If you go back, and look at the results of the 2019 elections. Right Honorable Isa Muhammad Ashuru won for the PDP votes that even sitting governors could not win in Northern Kaduna. He won over 212,000 votes in Zone 1 in that election. No candidate, even the senatorial candidate for that zone could not garner as much votes as right on Abu Isa Muhammad Ashuru in 2019. In zone 2, the votes that Ashuru got in the general election in zone 2 is more than the combined total of the PDP candidate and the PRP candidate in person of Mr. La and Senator Sheikh Hussain. If you put their votes together, I think it was it is just about the same figure with what I should have got in the governorship election. In Southern Kaduna, or Kaduna Sub-Senatorial District, he got more than 100,000 votes than Senator Njumala got in his senatorial ambition, or a senatorial election. So what does that tell you? That Isa Ashuru is on ground. And all this happened, especially in Zone 1 and Zone 2, in spite of the monumental manipulation that happened. The compromise, the rigging. We, I'm saying this with all honesty and confidence. We have the original results. Anybody that cares to challenge me should challenge me. We have the Supreme Court said elections are won at the polling units, and we have the results of the polling units authenticated by any. If I, if we give you those results, you will see that they are at variance with what was declared. So Ashuru was able to garner these votes for the PDP because he's on ground. He is loved by the people. And so I do not see anybody today, either in the PDP or in the APC, that have this kind of popularity, that have this kind of acceptance, that have this kind of capacity to woo this kind of votes for the PDP in 2023, other than right Honorable Isa Muhammad Ash. Okay, we're still with it. We're still on it. Um, that's um, Director of Media Relations, so Honorable Isa Muhammad Ashiru, uh, Campaign um, Consultative Working Committee, Edward uh, John Outer, on it. And of course, um, what can we say here then to when it comes to the time? We we'll expect that the best candidate would win. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, so people are following us on, on our Facebook page and. Uh, 
so many comments coming in there we just want to you know give this time out to you know um uh, you know a facebook page uh, followers and let's get to hear some of what they're saying and then we'll come back to the audience too take one or two comments from you uh jeffrey on the facebook page. all right this one is coming from ubedi ocholi ogatoni your media started well aligning themselves with the people now yeah you always look at things from the perspectives of the government of the day all right and um, okay that's his own opinion yeah, abdullahi sure, sure. sambo insisting on falsehood propaganda would not do the opposition any good the progressive achievement of erify are too glaring to be cheaply denied all right and uh, this one is coming from emmanuel de dawn good morning victor seriously uh, okay okay just he's just greeting all of us uh, may god bless your guests okay may god bless your guest abundantly for being sincere uh, with his opinion okay ay plus uh, good morning to god bless you for contrib your contribution on uh, this amos a johanna good morning my great station please keep it up and remain blessed let's join hands to build a truthful government in kaduna state in which people will live in peace now government of the day promises us uh, things but what we are experiencing from their promise is different uh, different things of development uh, capacity and we cannot sleep in the night today we pray god show have mercy on us uh, good morning mr toyn and your guest the policy set when apc was founded is what is affecting the country it's unfortunate that the policies are becoming a national problem i wish nigerians will understand that this set of people are just playing politics and choose nigerians uh, and choose nigerians for once if that happens 99 percent of these candidates will not come to power and uh, mr twain and my brother edward uh, being objective and brilliant in digesting the fact meant for his principal honorable isa ashiru he had never decamped for any party as others does so i owe him every respect to pick the ticket for the governorship seat comes 2023 by god's grace he will be our messiah uh, who God would use to redeem us from okay, the um, harsh government? Jeffers, so many, <laughs> so many, many messages. Things. Yes, but um, just let's um, that we can do it on, on our Facebook page. Let's go to a caller. Say, you know, the phones are ringing, and uh, I've not given out the numbers, but that's what's happening here: zero eight one forty thousand nine eight nine. 081-40989 or 070-87800-989 070-87800-989 Hello, good morning. Master Toy and uh, Elder Mazi with our green here and uh, Edward, a very good morning. Good morning. Kure is the name. Thank you. Uh, Master Edward has spoken very well. How I wish he, uh, what he has said will come and put it into practice. Because politicians, I can never trust them. I want them to just force. I don't want to hear anything APC come 2023. If God allow us to be alive. That's your that's your opinion. Because All right, uh, Kuri, we got opinion. you. Yes, that's let's, my let's, let's yes, let's keep it that. Family. Let's keep it that way. Uh, stay taking your calls. Uh, we we'll keep it that way. Uh, stay with your calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Pius calling. Uh, okay, Pius, let's hear you. Good morning, Sir Jess. Good morning, Pius. Well articulated, mm. well spoken. That's just a little observation. Okay. In what happened last time, mm. I can tell and work for Isa Ashuru in last election. Mm. In my own capacity, uh, many people are aware that uh, a little observation. Mm. So you keep put here as the handlers need to do a lot for him. Mm. We know the new electoral act is in place that we should not go and sleep. I have informed of in the platform, I said something and I informed doctor, we need to do something. Mm. Or you need to do something. Mm. If at all during the election you need you want to get it again. So it is from the polling unit. There are some strategies that okay, Paris. If you follow, so that is it. Paris, okay, we, we got you on that. Yeah. Okay, got you on that. I'll take one more, and then uh, we'll come back here in the studios. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Good morning. 
morning to your guests in the studio. Morning. Your name, please. Yeah. Your name, please. I'm Fred. I'm Fred, Fred calling from Kaboot. All right, Fred. Let's hear you. Yeah. You know, the issue about political party is all about interest. Mm. Everybody is pushing, pushing to see that his own party succeeds in every election year. But the thing is that people hardly take responsibility for their failure to accomplish the tax they promised. They have made people to lose hope in all the political parties you have in Nigeria because you have candidates and followers who never take responsibility for their failure. I wonder what ego they have as if they are not human beings. Today you can talk nice and after you have been given that power, you become a beast. So let's get to the point, uh, Fred. What what are you what are you saying? We we'll get there. Yes, what I'm saying is that yes, your guests have spoken well, but how can we trust them with the mandate? Okay, okay, okay. All right, we got you on that. How to how can we trust you? Okay, so um yes, uh, much that we can take from our callers. I come back to you, Edward. Yes. So uh, just before I do that, Edward, let me just clear this thing with the the first stage on our Facebook page. Mm. The, the guy that was saying um, I've gone <laughs> government or something like that. No, uh, sorry, uh, no. My position is not to take sides. Uh, no government. I'm not. You know, the, my position is. I'm, I'm only playing what is called the devil's advocate. You know, the government is not here. I can stand in for government just mm. to put the other side across. So, not that Invicta takes you know sides. Right, yeah. No, we don't here. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, Edward. Okay. Let me start from the last caller mm. uh, to say how how can we how can we trust them mm. if given the opportunity? You can trust us because Ashiru is not new. He has represented the people of Kudan in the State House of Assembly. He has represented the people of Kudan Makarfi, Federal Constituency in the National Assembly, and uh, I can tell you what he has done in those 16 years at the fear of being immodest there is no legislator in this country that has done what he has done my brother the records are there you can go to kudan if you have people from kudan call them and ask he has done enormously well in the last 16 years he has built a studio a stadium a member of house of representatives a stadium for state-of-the-art ict centers empowerment programs and vocational training centers he has constructed roads so many things so 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 many things that time won't permit me to mention so would he do better if given the opportunity we believe that uh, he can replicate what he did in the rural communities of kudan across the rural communities of the 23 local governments of kaduna state and also the towns in kaduna state so that is that and uh for the other caller that say we need to do well, I agree with him, we need to do well. And I want to assure him and assure the teeming supporters of PDP, uh, the teeming uh, uh, electorates of Kaduna State who voted for the PDP in 2019, that nothing, nothing will be left unturned. That no human being, no one born of a woman can perpetrate the kind of evil that was perpetrated against the PDP. No, 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 I mean, let's, uh, let's, so, let's, let's be fair with our so, so, statement. So, yeah. so anyway, uh, uh, sorry about that, but yeah. nobody we want to assure people that uh, if Ashuru emerges the candidate of the party, he will work together with progressive forces of this state to ensure that uh, the, P the APC, which have admitted that it has failed, is not reinforced in what under whatever guise. In 2023 it is clear that what we have had in the last seven years is a clueless government cluelessness in physical uh, and administrative security uh, management uh, uh, in the state. Pers and uh, to it, uh, and, uh, mm. and uh, we have a governor a, an aspirant who knows this state who was part of some of the governments that have successfully managed crisis in this state. Isa Ashiru was part and parcel of the McCarthy administration and we saw how they managed the crisis uh, that uh, broke out in this state in the early 2000s. So people can trust him that he will be fair, he will be just and that he will unite the people of Kaduna State again because in the last seven years we have never been so divided.
like now. Okay, um, well, thank you, Edward uh, John Outer. Thank you for coming to our studios and sharing uh, thoughts like this with us. Um, PDP's perspectives to matters of governance and what it can do. All right, um, so that would just be about the size of it on the program perspectives this morning. Edward John Outer, Director of Media Relations, to Honorable Issa Mohammed Ashiru's um, Campaign Consultative Working Committee with us in the studio. So thank you for coming over. Thank you very much, uh, Torin, for having me. And once again, happy Good Friday to the good people of Kaduna State. All right. We'll come back with perspectives on Monday. Jeffrey Adiku, thank you for connecting us with the people. And wisdom, we thank you for putting us in the pictures. Have a wonderful Friday. And uh, it's a good Friday today. That all the teachings of Christ for this day make a meaning in our lives. Good morning. Mm -hmm.